in today's lesson, we're going to talk all about travel skin tips, what to take, what to leave behind, some food recommendations, and some other recommendations to help you feel and look your best on your travels as well. When you attend these live recordings, you can ask me your questions. You can think about it kind of like office hours. And if you want to register for upcoming lessons like this, be sure to check out the show notes. And of course, you can find everything over at theschoolofradiance.com. So oftentimes when we're traveling to events, we are also going, we're traveling, we're going to events. That was a funny slip there. Whether it's a wedding, because wedding season's coming up, whether it's a family reunion, or you're on your holiday, and you're going to be having lots of pictures taken, you're definitely going to want to be showing up as your best version and looking good in your swimsuit and your bikini and in your dresses and outfits. You want your hair to look great, your skin to look great, your body composition, you don't want to be bloated and all of those good things. Let me know if that sounds like the dream for when you are traveling, that you just have these beautiful photo and video memories of you and your loved ones living your best life, whether it's on the beach or at a family gathering. Hello, Beata, Dawn. Hey, Delilah. We just connected actually, which is great. Looking forward to your one-on-one -on -one coming up next week. Hey, Elizabeth, iPhone 15 Pro, Carrie, Michelle, Tamara, and Karen. Great to have you all here. All right, let's start with the skincare to pack. Hey, Elizabeth, great to see you. Let's start with the skincare to pack. You're going to need to keep it basic. So basically, what is the basic routine that I encourage you all to be consistent with? Let's see if there's any longtime listeners here. I know Delilah, you are, Michelle, Tamara, Carrie. What does a basic skincare routine look like? This is what you're going to take with you. This is pop quiz time. Your cleanser, your moisturizer, your sunscreen, your exfoliant. Those are really your basics. And then I would also add in an eye cream. I would also add in an antioxidant serum to protect your sun, your skin a little bit more from the sun, because you're probably going to be in the sun a little bit more. I hope so. hope you're taking a sunny holiday. And then also body products to keep your skin looking fantastic. Get rid of the lizard legs, trade those out for beautiful, glassy, well exfoliated, hydrated legs and arms. And for the body product, I love the Dermalac that you'll find on my skin shop. This is exfoliating, this is also hydrating, and it's actually a lactic acid body peel. So kind of similarly to how we want to prep our skin for the spring and summer is also very similar to how we want to care for the skin when we're on a holiday, especially if we're going somewhere sunny. Oh, this is a great question. So to reiterate, take your cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, scrub, and also add in an eye cream, a antioxidant serum, and a body product. I do also recommend that you take your own shampoo and conditioner with you because oftentimes in hotels, you're getting really terrible products that have a lot of parabens, phthalates, sulfates, artificial dyes, and fragrances. You think that a hotel, even if it's a luxury hotel, is going to splurge on giving you access to expensive products. No, they're often looking for really cheap products to put in the restroom and the shower for you to use. So definitely take your own shampoo and conditioner. That's super key. Oh, we have a great question here from Carrie. There are usually spas on cruises. However, the prices are outrageous. I had to get my bangs trimmed, but it was costly. And also Carrie's mentioned bad water quality too. Yes. And with the travel, I wanted to sort of add this bonus biohacking side of things, what I would recommend and what I personally take when I do travel to keep my health on point as well, to reduce things like bloating and support great sleep and just feeling and looking my best. When it comes to going to the spa, this is actually a really good question in general. Thank you, Carrie. Go to the spa for your manicure and your pedicure. I actually wouldn't really recommend going to the spa for a massage or a body mask or a treatment or even a facial at a spa. And there's some reasons for that. 
when you're going to a spa, you're getting access to spa products. However, I do also teach a number of medical aesthetics physician clinicians, so doctors and nurses, their whole clinic teams, and also estheticians too on basically how to build their practice. And there are some really great estheticians out there who own their own spa and they're using really great products. But for the most part in a spa, they're going to be using spa grade products, not practitioner grade products. This is a really interesting nuance in the skincare space. I find that spa products are really kind of overpriced for what they are. They're expensive. You have to use a lot of the product and the ingredients just aren't excellent. And they typically really don't meet the needs of the mature skin needs. And they're often backed by a lot of marketing as opposed to a lot of research and development, which you find more in practitioner grade products like what I offer on my skin shop. So that's an observation, little tips of what to do in the spa. When you want a massage, go see your registered massage therapist. We need chiro adjustment and see your chiropractor for that kind of stuff. So I would reserve for the spa manis and pedis. And getting your hair done from your hairstylist that you have that connection with, it's kind of like getting Botox on a cruise. <laughs> kind of like getting Botox laser or, or other injectables like fillers on a cruise. Probably not a great idea. They're just kind of getting you in and getting you out and trying to see as many people as possible. You're not going to have great follow-up. And those in that situation... Uh, I've actually seen this go sideways where people actually do rejuvenation on their travels or even elect to do plastic surgery tourism where people go to another country and get a facelift. I have one example of a client of mine who I saw. She went to Korea to get a facelift and she ended up looking Korean afterwards. There, This is a thing, cultural specific plastic surgery. I was not planning on talking about this, but I actually think it's really interesting to mention because the question from Carrie came up of going to the spa. I think it's perfectly okay to treat yourself. I, I would treat yourself to a pedicure personally at a spa, but I wouldn't really do much more than that because when you're taking, you don't have to get a facial at a spa either. And the last thing you want is to have a facial done on your holiday and your travels and then have a reaction to the product. So with your cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, scrub, that's pretty much what they're going to be doing and putting on your skin in a, a spa type setting while you're traveling. And with the products that I recommend, you're getting more actives, you're getting more ingredients that are more suited for mature skin needs. Yes, you could absolutely take a mask with you. I have a few different mask options. But the other thing I really would love for you to take on your travels is the active peel, or sorry, the, the active peel system which is basically these peels. And I do a whole deep dive on organizing your retinols, peels, and serums. I call this skin cycling. I have a whole lesson dedicated to this in our spring skincare tutorials, summer skincare tutorials, fall skincare tutorials, winter skincare tutorials. There's different things we actually want to be doing each season. And Delilah just registered for those who are in the uh, skincare tutorials that are happening now. Welcome, Delilah. Elizabeth, massage at the spa. Yeah, sure. If you want to treat yourself, I just recommend that you ask the spa if they have a registered massage therapist on staff. So you're getting something more beneficial as opposed to kind of like a lighter spa type of massage. Actually, Reiki would be something really cool to get while you're traveling just to balance and ground that energy out too. I, I do like that. And uh, these questions are fantastic. Okay, so we've established your rejuvenation do your hair and hair cutting and hair coloring with the practitioners you already see. And if you're looking for practitioners for your rejuvenation, whether that's skin, laser, skin peels, lasers, and other non-surgical options like injectables, I can actually help you find those clinicians in your area as well that use the tech and options that I like. Not sure if you know that I do that in a one-on-one, -on -one, but I do. And again, getting back to the active peel system, it comes in these towelettes and I do a demonstration on exactly how to use it in my tutorials, but this is going to just give you a bit more exfoliation and a little bit of a peel to give more glassy skin 
while you're traveling. And you could actually do this in the evening while you're relaxing in your bath. You can cleanse, you can do your scrub, and then follow that up with the uh, active peel system, which are those really easy to travel with sort of like sachets, towelettes. And I love traveling with that one. But for the most part, I actually won't recommend traveling with things like retinol or things like your dermal roller because you're probably going to be getting more sun exposure. And if, say, for example, you have a beach day or a lounge day at the pool or an outdoor wedding or outdoor family reunion type of event, you definitely don't want to be doing a peel the um, night before that's an intense one. The active peel system is an exception to that or your retinols or dermal rolling the day before because that can actually make your skin just a little bit more photosensitive. And these are some of the things we do kind of want to adjust a little bit with our skin cycling in the sunner, the sunnier months. So that's what I want you to take for skincare. Cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, scrub. You can start to make your checklist in your head. Your eye cream and antioxidant serum the active peel system and the Dermalac, as well as your shampoo and conditioner. What you can do is put those products in smaller travel friendly size containers. Um, however, when I travel, I do go with the checked bag and take all my products. I swear that about at least a quarter of my suitcase is products. I also recommend you take your own hair dryer because the hair dryers in hotels or on cruise ships, they're usually like these cheap ones that don't have a directed nozzle. And I do teach a hair tutorial on actually how to blow dry with a round brush to give a really good blowout look. And by the way, when you go to your hairstylist next time, I want you to observe how they style your hair. I want you to take notes out of their playbook and actually start to mimic that styling that your hairstylist is giving you for you at home so that you don't have to get blowouts all the time if that's not in your budget, which is not in most people's budgets. And the other thing is, I think this is perfect to segue into what supplements I take. With diet, this can fall by the wayside when we are on holiday and we have this mindset, oh, we're on holiday and have all the treats and things like that. The issue with really kind of throwing caution to the wind in regards to the foods you're eating, yes, you're going to be eating out more and also maybe your alcohol consumption might be out. Ideally, don't drink alcohol. It doesn't actually do anything good for you. You know, back in the day, they said smoking was good for us. And then they said, oh, wine's good for you because it has resveratrol. Well, actually, commercial wine made in North America has about 80 different ingredients that don't need to be on the label. So if you are traveling and you do want to have a beverage, go for Italian or French wine. They have better agricultural practices. And uh, better yet, go for champagne. Uh, it has less sugar. And that would be definitely a beautiful treat while you're away. Stick with your foods that you're also used to eating. I know this can be a little bit tricky, but basically I want you to test instead of guess how to eat. So if you know your blood type, eating for your blood type is great. That's a great free tip. But next you could definitely do the biome gut test. You'll find these biohacking options that I'm about to mention on my biohacking page on my website. And that's the school of radiance.com so that you get an understanding through the Viome Gut Intelligence Test Kit what foods you're eating and what foods you should be eating and which foods you should dial back on or eliminate completely because we don't want to be eating inflammatory foods. Now, if we are out and traveling and you're eating in restaurants, you're going to be unfortunately getting exposed to a lot more toxic rancid seed oils like different vegetable oils and in particular canola oil. These oils are highly inflammatory. A lot of research has come out on this, and a lot of people are actually saying that consuming these rancid, highly oxidized oils like canola oil are even worse than smoking. And these types of things we learn over time, and the whole concept of oxidative stress, we need to keep this as low as possible. 
so that we, number one, feel better, and number two, look better, and number three, actually provide more longevity for our lives so that we can go to more events and travel for much longer and be in a physical form and a body that we feel really good in for much longer as well. Michelle said, ha, I didn't know that. What was that? What was that point that I made that you didn't know? I'll take a sip of my danger coffee here. So good. I love this coffee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, champagne. I, I feel terrible. Even if I have just a glass of commercial wine, I won't do it. If I'm out in a restaurant and there's a bottle there and everyone's having some, I, I can't do it because number one, my sleep is going to be suffering that night. And number two, I just won't feel good. And if you have more sort of like fast food, takeout, toxic oils, and alcohol more than you're used to, guess what's going to happen? Your skin is going to tell you that your body is not very happy with you because of your living a little bit. About, you know, a couple days to a week later is when you start to maybe notice more breakouts or skin irritation or scalp irritation. And you're just not going to be feeling as good because you're not going to be sleeping as well. So what do we take with us to help us be able to eat out and still feel good? But first, before I get into that, when you order food at a restaurant, I want you to actually ask if they can cook your meal in butter, grass-fed butter, ideally. And if they do use oils, just say, just ask them if they can prepare it without any like canola oil, for example. Some restaurants are going to be a little bit more able to do this unless they have prepared sauces and mixes. So if you are going to travel and eat out, I recommend you look for those really crunchy, hippy dippy restaurants that can actually accommodate this and that are actually aware of this now. Depending on where you're visiting, you're going to find more of these or less of these types of restaurants that are going to be able to accommodate not cooking your food in toxic oils. Say, for example, butter is going to be great. Or in, for, if you're getting vegetables, you could just ask them to steam it. And if you're getting a steak, just ask them to cook it with salt and pepper and a little bit of butter. And that's it. You can go super basic with that. Go easy on things like smoothies because you're just getting a ton of carbohydrates. You're getting a ton of sugar. Actually starting your day with a to-go smoothie from a restaurant or a resort or a cruise is not the best way to start your day. You really want to start it with high quality protein. And I do recommend traveling with your protein. And Delilah actually asked me a really great question. We just had an initial meet and greet call. And her question was, what's the difference between collagen and protein? Are they different? Am I getting collagen in my protein? They are different. So say, for example, you're traveling, you do want to be taking a protein powder with you that you love, that you can easily put in your coffee, that you can also easily just put in some water that you've bought that's go for distilled water when you're traveling. And then also things like your collagen powder, put that in your coffee as well. So put a scoop of protein and a scoop of collagen that you're taking, that you're traveling with, and you can find my favorite uh, protein powders, love the Paleo Valley products, and I love the Organifi collagen powder that you're going to find on my biohacking page. There's some promo codes to help you out also to save you some money. So Organifi has 20% off if you use the code VARGA. On their products, which is pretty significant. Shout out to Organifi uh, for offering us all that. Uh, great company. Pack your protein, pack your collagen, and also pack your magnesium. I have a couple bottles left of the MagnaFlow, which is actually a magnesium bisglycinate that I made, and it's a, a tablet. And what I hear, you know, myself and also from those of you who have used it is you notice a difference in about two days. So I just have very limited quantity left of the MagnaFlow on my skin shop. So pick that one up. 
Traveling with magnesium is really essential because it's going to help you sleep. Magnesium, there's many different forms of magnesium. The magnesium bisglycinate is great for soft tissue also, which is what I love about that one. But do keep up with taking your supplements while you're traveling as well. I also recommend that you do travel with the anti-aging dermal formula because this is giving you your antioxidants and omegas all in one product. So that's a really easy product to travel with and you're taking one bottle or with your magnesium and your anti-aging dermal formula, put them in a baggie to travel with so you don't have to take the bottles with you. That's a great tip too. Or with your protein and collagen, if you don't want to take the big bags that they come with, just consolidate and put what you feel like you're going to need on your travels into a smaller bag as well. That's a great tip too. The other things that I recommend that you travel with are going to be an air purifier because a lot of hotels and resorts, and also goodness forbid, if you're staying with family and they're living in a moldy home, there's deodorizers, there's often mold in hotels. Motel, hotels usually actually have a lot of mold because you know people are careless in the bathroom and there's floods, all sorts of things. Nasty carpet. The air purifier that I recommend traveling with is either going to be the Air Angel or the Hypo Air Germ Defender. And you're going to find those two products through Hypo Air's link on my biohacking page. They're smaller units to travel with as opposed to the really big Air Doctor that you're going to have in your home, in your kitchen, main living space, your bedroom, and your office. Those are bigger units that are going to stay put. But with traveling, I definitely recommend having an air purifier in your vehicle, especially if you're using a rental car and they use like deodorizers and different cleaners and also smog, depending on where you're going. And then you can use that same smaller, more portable air purifier in your hotel room. Highly recommend that, that you purify the room that you are going to be staying in. The other thing that you can travel with to help you drink better water on the go is the Analima wand. So you're gonna be probably picking up the water that you're gonna be drinking from a store, whether that's spring water in a glass bottle or a big jug of distilled water. I wouldn't really go for the prepackaged alkaline water, anything like that. I would just go for straight up distilled water. That's gonna be like the purest form of water, but that's also dead water. So we want to revive our water and make it more bioavailable and structure it. And the Analima wand, it's about this big. I just did an interview with the founder of that company. It's really easy to take. It's great to travel with. It comes in a metal case. And all you do is kind of swirl it in your water or just leave it in the cup for, I don't know, 10 to 20 seconds. And it's going to structure the water that you drink. This is going to support you from a thirst standpoint and also from an energetic standpoint and bioenergetic standpoint and also they've done research for mitochondrial function and brain function all through structuring your water it's putting the water back into an alive form and a bioavailable form because when you purchase water and, and it's been sitting on the shelf and things like that it's been taken out of its natural environment Water really loses its electromagnetic ionic interactions and the bond angles shift and all these things, and it kind of becomes like dead water. So definitely traveling with that Analima wand, I think is fantastic. The other thing you could travel with is actually the Bond Charge Mini PEMF mat, and that's going to be great just for kind of settling your nervous system. This is what I find pulsed electromagnetic frequencies do for me is they just help me relax. And there's different settings you can use with your PEMF mat. There's a number of companies that make them including higher dose and Therasage and Bond Charge. I do really like traveling with the Bond Charge Mini. It's pretty small, it's about this big and it's basically just a large enough to sit and fit on pretty much any chair. And uh, that's just a great, great way to kind of relax and get the PEMF benefits on the go, which you know can help with more energy production because it's helping to ground the body. Now, 
one of the most important things that I would say to travel with is actually your EMF protective clothing. And whenever I travel, I'm wearing EMF protective shorts underneath my pants, skirt, or dress, and I'll travel with my silver hoodie. Those articles of clothing are from the company called No Choice. And what EMF protective clothing does and how it works is it uses a really um, tight weave of silver threads in material to actually block and shield you from EMFs on the areas of the body where you're wearing it. Michelle, not TSA friendly, right? Well, number one, I don't recommend going through those radiation scanners anyways. I just always opt for a pat down and, you know, away you go. It just might take a little extra time to go through security, but I always wear my EMF clothing when I'm traveling and when I'm on the plane, because if you think about it, when you're in an airport, everyone's on their technologies. You're in this like soup of electric fields and wireless cellular radiation, which is detrimental to our blood. And when we're not grounded, we're on our technology, we are actually seeing changes in our blood, a reduction of blood flow to our skin, our brain, our vital organs, more clotting factors form. There's lots of research on this, by the way. EMFs and Wi-Fi and electric fields, this stuff is not woo. This has been researched for quite a quite a while, and I've been following this research since 2017. And one of the best ways to keep your sleep scores on point is to also sleep in that clothing while you're traveling. And then, of course, you're going to want to launder it when you come home because you're going to be wearing it and sleeping in it. But traveling with your uh, EMF sheets and bedding that No Choice has you could also do that too. There's a couple of different options, but definitely protecting yourself while you're in transit and also while you're sleeping is just going to help your sleep remain on point. Now, is there anything else? Any other questions about travel tips? Ooh, the other thing is to keep your nighttime and your bedtime and your arise time similar. You want to stay consistent with the time that you go to bed and the time that you wake up because if you go to bed too late or you get up too early, it is going to mess with your circadian rhythm a little bit and we don't want that. We want you to stay on point so that you're really enjoying the most out of your holiday. You know, Maybe it's a work event or a family event or a wedding and things like that. You really want to uh, just maintain your best version and your energy. Delilah, do you take digestive enzymes? Recommend a brand. Buy optimizers. I was actually going to mention this. It's like you're reading my mind, Delilah. Love it. Uh, Delilah is, you know, I, you definitely have that, that beautiful quality to you that knows that to be beautiful and live our best lives, we need to be as pure as possible. And while we travel, sure, we're going to get exposed to different things, different climates, different foods. So actually taking digestive enzymes